So today we're going to talk about the fasting influence over growth hormone. Now, why is that important? Because as you age, growth hormone decreases more and more and more and more to the point where you're in your 60s or 70s or 80s and there's not much left. And the problem with that is that it affects your proteins, your skin. So your skin starts looking older, your joints fall apart, you lose muscle mass, you lose your hair. But other than that, you're doing good. Growth hormone helps to preserve proteins that help you look youthful. It actually helps with body fat. So it's one of the main fat burning hormones. It also helps in building lean muscle mass, thus the word growth hormone. And it preserves muscle, so it prevents the loss of muscle. It also is involved with bone density, making sure your bones are dense and strong, and collagen, which is involved in a lot of different things, uh, including your skin. So without collagen, your skin can look old very quickly. Growth hormone peaks at puberty, and every year it decreases. Uh, it spikes when you're sleeping. It's suppressed when you're eating, especially carbohydrates. You can spike growth hormone with high intensity interval training. You can also suppress growth hormone with stress, but you can dramatically increase growth hormone through fasting. I'm going to put some links down below referencing uh, some of the studies, but it's been shown that in a two day fast, you can potentially increase growth hormone by 200%. A three-day fast, up to 300%. And in one report, with a seven-day fast, there was a spike with growth hormone by 1,250%. Fasting will help you with all of these factors right here, especially preserving muscle. Because there's this thought that if I stop eating, I'm going to lose my muscle mass. That is not going to happen for a period of time. If you're starving and you tapped out all your fat, yeah, then there's going to be a problem because your body's going to go after muscle. But if you have fat to be tapped into, your body won't necessarily go after your protein for fuel. And this is a survival thing that's been going on for a very, very long time, especially way back when we had to hunt for our food and we didn't have food available 24-7. So if you can imagine, if our bodies didn't adapt to starvation, uh, we would have died off a long time ago. And there's a lot of genetic factors and hormone pathways that will preserve your muscle when you don't eat. In fact, when you eat too much or too frequent, you develop insulin resistance problem, you become a diabetic, and you start losing your muscle mass that way. But when you stop eating, there's all sorts of things to protect you. It was found that short-term fasting causes four times better muscle preservation than being on a low-calorie diet. That's fascinating. I'll put that link down below. Fasting inhibits protein breakdown. The word for that is catabolism. Fasting also supports your brain and your nervous system. Now, you might be thinking, I need to consume some type of maybe branch chain amino acids or some type of protein shake before I work out or during a fast. Not necessarily. The dietary recommendations for protein should be between 0.6 to 0.8 grams of protein per pound of body weight per meal. So just multiply your weight in pounds by 0.6 or by 0.8 and come up with the amount of protein and grams that you need to consume per meal. What determines if it's going to be 0.6 or 0.8 has to do with how big you are, how fast your metabolism is. If you are younger and you have a fast metabolism, go with this right here. If you are older, you're smaller and you have a slower metabolism, you can use this one right here. Or just use 0.7 if you're unsure. And that will give you a rough estimate of how much protein you actually need. So to preserve and retain muscle mass if you're fasting, you don't need to be constantly consuming massive amounts of protein. You need sufficient protein. You also don't want to eat too frequently. You want to do fasting. You want to do exercise, especially high intensity interval training. You want to avoid carbs, you want to get more sleep, you want to try to keep your stress as low as possible. There you have it. If you want more information about growth hormone, I put a link right here. So if you're enjoying this content, go ahead and share it with someone that could really benefit from it. 
hey, before you leave, I just wanted to give you a little quick history on some of the books that I wrote. This was one of the first books. It's called Dr. Berg Body Shapes. It was my attempt at um, writing about body types. Uh, what was very interesting about this book is I actually did all the images myself. Uh, don't ask me why. Um, they look actually not quite as professional as some of the uh, images that I have in the new book. But anyway, this is my first attempt right here called Dr. Berg's Body Shape Diets. Uh, and then I wrote a book um, more extensive called The Seven Principles of Fat Burning. I don't even have a copy anymore, actually, um, because it's outdated. Uh, the next book, uh, I put about a thousand hours into this one right here called The New Body Type Guide, Major Updates on the Body Types. Uh, I put a lot of energy into this. Uh, it has professional images, graphics, all sorts of things. Now, the problem with this book is it doesn't really describe what this is really about. Body types are only a small portion of what's in this book. And that's why I changed the name to the Healthy Keto Plan, okay? If you happen to have this book, you don't really need this book because there's some only very, very minor updates. But if you don't have this, you need to get this one right here. Um, this book goes into every single detail that you would ever want to know about. It goes into the seven principles of fat burning, it goes into hormones, uh, the body types, the basic keto plan. It goes into intermittent fasting. I talk about the 10 fat burning triggers and blockers and fat burning strategies with a lot of details in every single chapter. I go into body issues that interfere with losing weight. Um, there's very few people that just have a weight problem. They have a lot of body issues, whether it's sleeping problems, uh, stress problems, inflammation, menopause. I cover that extensively in this book. Then I talk about how to get rid of stress and I show you a technique. Uh, then I get into exercising. And then I have a lot of really good recipes in this book as well. So uh, this is a good reference guide. Um, on my website, if you get this book, you get this one free. It's called Healthy Keto Intermittent Fasting. This is the shortcut, uh, quick guide to this book. And uh, the reason I created this book is to have you, within 45 minutes, learn how to do keto, okay, in intermittent fasting, exactly what you need to do. Then you can fill in the blanks with this book right here. So right now I'm doing a special. If you get this book, you get this one totally free, or you can go to Amazon and get these individually. So I just want to clarify the difference between this book and this updated one right here. If you don't have this, you need to get this right here. That way you can get the exact correct information to do it healthily. So if you're enjoying this content, go ahead and share it with someone that could really benefit from it.